Hi, my name's Burke, and I play Sir Roland Baptiste Beauregard, everybody's favorite neighborhood paladin, in the ongoing D&D 5th edition campaign, The Reign of the Sundered Idol. So when Ducky initially approached me about being in this campaign, I pitched a few different character concepts to him, and obviously we ended up on Roland. And I initially pitched Sir Roland as being like this cowboy character who would like ride into town and then right wrongs and then ride off again into the sunset. I like the sort of cowboy template for him because when you look back at like the historical Old West, you see that the real historical people that these Western serial good guy cowboys were based on were not good people. A lot of like uh, consummate gamblers, the Earps and Doc Holliday and uh, was, you know, Wild Bill Hickok, a uh, famous gambler. And like that vice led to other vices and, and uh, ultimately led to violent ends for a lot of them. I looked back and, and sort of combining the the ideals of like a, a fantasy paladin or like this cowboy-like character with some of these vices and some of these moral gray areas I thought would be a good fit for the theme and the, the tones that Ducky was, was going for in The Reign of the Sundered Idol. A, a huge influence character-wise on Roland is Val Kilmer's portrayal of Doc Holliday in the movie Tombstone. And I also, uh, once I agreed to roll a paladin, I started doing some research into what paladins were. Because before rolling in, in this campaign, I only ever thought of the word paladin as referring to the Dungeons & Dragons Holy Knights. Um, so I did a little research, and it turns out that paladin, the word, originally referred to these 12 mythical knights under Charlemagne, who is an old king of France. And these old knights had been elevated to almost Arthurian status. They were like the French analog to the Knights of the Round Table uh, in England. And the leader of these knights, who would be sort of the analog to Lancelot from, from Arthurian legend, was a knight named Roland. And so that's where uh, I got Roland's name from. I also thought it would be fun to play Roland as a knight from one of these historic religious orders. So like the Knights Templar that kind of sprang up around the Crusades in areas like France back in the Middle Ages. And so this uh, Sir Roland became this sort of amalgamation of like these, these Old West cowboy ideas and these chivalric uh, religious night ideas and it's been really fun um, playing them together and, and, and seeing how how that affects Roland as a character. So Roland's voice is hugely influenced by Val Kilmer's Doc Holliday in Tombstone. The Cajun accent a lot of his affectations are and it's it's funny or I thought it would be funny. I like the idea of him being this character that's based on a lot of like very old world French ideas, like the chivalric knights, the religious orders of knights like the Templars based in France, and then giving him a sort of new world French accent and the sort of Cajun accent that was used by Val Kilmer in, in Tombstone. So there's this, this other character in addition to Val Kilmer who's been a, a big influence on Roland's voice, and that's Gary Oldman's character of Zorg in The Fifth Element, which, if you haven't seen it, is a fantastic sci-fi movie. It's super goofy, but Gary Oldman plays this sort of corporate evil guy, like just this nefarious dude. And there's a scene where he's introducing himself to another character where uh, the camera, like, zooms in on his penthouse office in this giant cyberpunk uh, skyscraper. And uh, just the line read as he goes, uh, Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg is uh, something that kind of bounces around in my head when I do my Roland voice. Of course, doing any D&D &D voice, you know, you say to yourself, oh, I'm going to sound like Val Kilmer and Gary Oldman 
and then uh, an hour into the session, you're just uh, you're just mumbling into a microphone. But um, that's how it goes. So to get into character for Roland, um, it used to be that I would watch clips from Tombstone, uh, specifically the back and forth between uh, Johnny Ringo and Doc Holliday. And there's this one little moment, which is probably my favorite moment in the movie, where Johnny Ringo's kind of pressing Wyatt Earp and pressing Doc Holliday about uh, being lawmen. And Wyatt Earp, he's trying to defuse the situation. And he's saying, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm in retirement. I'm not a lawman anymore. And Johnny Ringo's like, oh, good. Well, what about you, Doc? Are you, are you retired? And it cuts to Doc Holliday, who, if you're unfamiliar with the character or the historical figure, he had tuberculosis. And so he's always very sick. And so in this moment, this sort of renowned, deadly outlaw, Johnny Ringo, he's kind of needling Doc Holliday. And he says, what about you? Are you retired? And it look it cuts over to uh, Doc Holliday, and he just looks like trash. He's like he's like sweaty and pale and drunk, and he's kind of swaying. And he goes, "Oh, not me! I'm in my prime." And uh, I always thought that moment was really cool. So I've watched that just kind of get a feel for the voice. Now Roland has sort of come into his own as a character. I've had to lean less and less on these. Um, old cowboy tropes and like, you know, what would Doc Holliday do? Stuff like that. I think a lot about like, well, what is Roland feeling right now going into the session? Or, you know, what's a point that he's trying to prove? And it's been a really interesting dynamic in this campaign uh, from a character standpoint. With Roland being a, a, a paladin of these, these archons, these gods of the world, and now he's gotten a little peek behind the curtain. And he's seeing that the Archons aren't really the pillars of creation that he's thought they were. Or he's been taught that they were all of his life. And so that's, that's brought up a lot of inner turmoil with him. And a lot of his decisions are based on like, okay, well, you know, do I run with this idea and challenge the gods as a paladin? Or, you know, do I double down on my ideas and act in that way? And, you know, asking myself, well, what does that look like? And how does Roland, like, like how would Roland approach besieging a city or taking a, taking an enemy commander captive? That's been uh, a sort of fun mental exercise of kind of putting myself in his shoes. Um, so that's that's what I've been doing to prepare lately. So there have been a couple of real high points in this campaign for me. I would say my favorite character moment for Roland came pretty early. It was after we had had the first fight with uh, some guards outside of Elmenhof, and I think we were walking in, and BKG's character, Emerin, you know, said something to Roland to the effect of like, don't give yourself in to like murder. You know, you don't you don't want to you don't want to give in to that that darkness that's inside of you. I saw, I you know I saw how you acted out there, and then Roland coming back with, uh, "I am not a murderer." It's something I said in the moment, but has now become sort of a, a defining idea in how I think of Roland as a character. Another favorite moment I had is just from a mechanical standpoint was recently the, the Siege of Bracker Corps where we got to zoom out from our individual characters and command these units laying siege to a city. Um, that was really fun. Uh, that that uh, sort of harkened back to playing more of a war game or a tactics game rather than regular D&D. &D. And it was a really fun, refreshing moment that I enjoyed. But those are, those are probably my two favorite overall moments from the campaign so far. All right, y'all. Uh, thanks so much for watching. It's been really nice to be able to go through the background of my character with you. Don't forget to follow us at the links below. Reign of the Sun or Idol. Coming to a bookstore near you soon. Pick it up. Buy it. Please. Buy it. We need the money. We're strapped for cash. We're in debt to a lot of very dangerous people. Please buy the book. Buy the book. Ducky won't tell you. They're holding him hostage. Buy the book. Bye, guys. Have a good one. And for the love of God, 
Go outside. Touch grass. Leave. You can escape. Go. Go. 